The 2024 Paris Olympics have gotten off to a rainy start, but weather is only one of the many worries organizers have had to deal with during a game that seems to have become a lightning rod for controversy. The Olympics opening ceremony included a segment that had some viewers seen red. Dancers and drag queens performed a scene alongside a fashion runway. It was capped off by the appearance of actor and singer Philippe Catherine, who was painted in glittering blue paint for the role of Dionysus, a Greek god of fertility, wine, and pleasure. While art experts have pointed out that the scene was similar to paintings like Dutch painter Jan van Baylert's Feast of the Gods, some said the scene reminded them of Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper, which depicts Jesus Christ and the Twelve Apostles. Enraged viewers took to social media to say it mocked the Christian faith. Thomas Jolly, the artistic director of the opening ceremony, said in a media briefing, We wanted something that would unite people. We didn't want anything subversive. Jolly told news channel BFM-TV that the scene was specifically meant to depict a, quote, big pagan celebration linked to the gods of Olympus, and thus the Olympics. Paris 2024 spokesperson Anne Decom eventually apologized and claimed there was no intention to offend. And clearly there was never uh, an intention uh, to, to show disrespect to uh, any uh, religious group. She added that the idea behind the performance was to celebrate community tolerance. The metal band Gojira performed the 19th century French anthem A Sa Ira during the opening ceremony. It was a massive spectacle that included lots of fire, a beheaded Marie Antoinette, and of course, heavy riffs. Though many praised the production, Fox News pundits and other right-wing commentators decried the performance. Media figure Andrew Tate, who is set to go on trial in Romania on sex trafficking charges, wrote on X, Satanists control the West and they show you that they worship the devil. It's not a conspiracy theory, they literally show you. Are you blind? Gojira frontman Joe Duplantier laughed off the accusations, though, pointing to France's history of separating government from religion during the French Revolution of the late 1700s. He told Rolling Stone, It's French history. It's French charm, you know, beheaded people, red wine, and blood all over the place. It's romantic. It's normal. There's nothing satanic. In yet another case of organizers of the Paris Olympics clashing with religious groups, France has barred French athletes, but not those from other countries, from wearing the hijab or other religious headscarves at all levels of sport. Amélie Odera Castera, the French sports minister, said in September 2023 that the rule is tied to the country's secularist political ideology, thus prohibiting religious displays in sports. Athletes both within and outside of France have opposed the decision. Australian boxer Tina Rahimi wrote on Instagram, Women have the right to choose how they want to dress, with or without a hijab. I choose to wear the hijab as a part of my religion, and I'm proud to do so. It's so un unfortunate for the athletes in France because, you know, it has nothing to do with your performance. Even so, the International Olympic Committee has supported France's decision, stating, Freedom of religion is interpreted in many different ways by different states. Groups, including Amnesty International, have condemned the IOC and asked it to withdraw its support to France's headscarf ban. Before the 2024 Olympic Games even got underway, Nike's official kits for U.S. women's track and field competitors were slammed as being too revealing. An image of the one-piece leotard with a high-cut bikini line circulated on social media in April 2024, alongside the male alternatives, stirring plenty of debate. The CBC wondered if it should be called a costume instead of a uniform. A lot of people were like, wait, is this a joke? On Instagram, retired U.S. track and field athlete Lauren Fleshman called it a, quote, costume born of patriarchal forces. Olympic champion pole vaulter Katie Moon, a Nike athlete, likewise called the outfit concerning and said it warranted the response it received. However, she noted that it would not be the only option and took aim at some of the critics, writing, If you honestly think that on the most important days of our careers we're choosing what we wear to appease the men watching over what we're most comfortable and confident in, to execute to the best of our abilities, that's pretty offensive. Jamie Schultz, a kinesiology professor and author of Regulating Bodies, Elite Sport Policies and Their Unintended Consequences, suggested that such designs are sexualized to draw viewers and generate more money. She told Women's Health, Once we accepted that women are going to be Olympic athletes, sports federations and brands wanted to try to make some money off of that, which is where the sexualization aspect comes in. Imani Halif of Algeria and Lin Yuting of Taiwan both failed gender eligibility tests for the 2023 Women's World Boxing Championships, but were cleared to fight at the 2024 Paris Olympics. Lin is a two-time gold medalist at World Championships. She won the bantamweight class in New Delhi in 2018 and the featherweight competition in Istanbul in 2022. Halif won a silver in the light welterweight division. The controversy over them competing in Paris appears to be mired in confusion and conflicting statements. Umar Kremlev, the president of the International Boxing Association, told Russia's TASS agency at the time of the 2023 bans that DNA tests of the athletes revealed Y chromosomes, which are associated with males. Kremlev said, Based on DNA tests, we identified a number of athletes who tried to trick their colleagues into posing as women. 
Outlets, including Marca, called them male-born transgender boxers. NBC News suggests their genders assigned at birth are not known, writing, Alif and Lin have both always competed as women, and there's no indication that either identifies as transgender or intersex. The Associated Press characterized a clash between the IOC and IBA as fallout from a years-long dispute over leadership failures, finances, and integrity. In June 2023, the IOC withdrew its recognition of the IBA due to what it called a total lack of financial transparency, effectively barring the governing body from the Olympics.